Talking about it. Yeah, everyone hates to talk about it. It would play back over and over and over. Working and, and watch them bleed and scream and, and it, won't, it won't stop. October 5th, 2010, big day. So as a comm engineer, we find mines and IEDs. I was primarily in the Panjway district in Afghanistan, and we're going there to clear an area. And then as we're clearing, uh, we found one. Vinny found it. I took over, found a hit in the same spot, prodded it. We had the search dog with us. It kept going back and sitting on the spot. Nothing was there. So we pushed past it, went down the road, everything looked good. And within a two minutes max of that, I hear the explosion. And there's American guys flying the air like ragdolls. There was three Americans staggering on the road, looked like they were put through like a cheese grater. So I grabbed them, pulled them back to a safe area. One of his guys was right here, and I can see he had no legs left. They were gone out here. And he was struggling to breathe. And um, he didn't last very long. The other guys took some rebar through the lungs. Apparently, I never really saw him. I got lost in the chaos. Individual I was working with was Bob. So Sergeant Robert Butler. So I'm working on Bob, and he's bleeding, and uh, he's just screaming in pain. And I look down, and his eyes are kind of glazed over, almost like lightning bolts in his eyes. And he um, wasn't fighting anymore. And then I came home, and uh, my parents had noticed it changed me. A lot of people had noticed it changed me. Nightmares came in worse, and then it just escalated from there. And I kept telling myself I was fine. I had dark thoughts about killing myself. Between the survivor guilt, the images themselves, the nightmares, flashbacks, I mean, all you want to do is fight. You want to kill somebody because you're feeling threatened. <sighs> it was difficult. I felt pretty low. I didn't want to go on living with that pain and that those images and things, so I decided that I needed to do something to get better because I want to get better. I couldn't believe that I was, you know, broken, that I was messed up. It's something that you live with that you manage. I love this clinic. I come here and I feel safe. If it wasn't for this clinic, I don't know if I would be here talking to you today. And for the first time in, I'd say, I don't know, 25 to 30 years, it's the first time that I can feel again. I still think almost daily of my friends that didn't make it, my friends that were killed. I feel guilty that I'm alive and they are not. But um, the treatment they give me is trying to make me understand why these things happen. There was a lot of trauma, a lot of cumulative trauma. It changed my life forever, and, and I'll never forget. I think there can be life after PTSD. They got me through some very difficult times. We were soldiers, and we were supposed to be pretty tough, so... You know, you suck it up, you go, and you just do your job. I lived the symptoms. I lived the panic, I lived the depression, all that. So it, it was a struggle. Everybody at the Operational Stress Injury Clinic at Parkwood has been amazing. To be able to live, to be able to be happy, I wouldn't be alive today if they hadn't have been there. It's that simple. I don't have the nightmares anymore. The moments aren't so negative. It's not doom and gloom all the time. Not only am I living life, but I'm enjoying the life I'm living. And that's a huge difference. Just feel at peace for the first time in a long time.
Thank you from the bottom of my heart.